Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good afternoon everyone and we are continuing with the module 6 that is micro texture measurement using EBSD techniques in SEM. So, this is lecture number 32 and this is regarding how we will quantitatively evaluate the Kikuchi diffraction pattern. The name of the lecture is quantitative evaluation of Kikuchi diffraction pattern. So, this is part 1. The concepts that will be covered in this lecture are indexing of the Kikuchi pattern, uh, relative positions of bands and poles with respect to the external you know frame of reference that is sample frame of reference and that is we will use the information to obtain crystallographic orientation of the sampled volume. So, we will do this by using the you know Kikuchi pattern an example Kikuchi pattern from the book of Valerie Randall and Olaf Engler. And you can see that the bands are you know forming and we have given for example, the band 1, the band 2 and the band 3 right. The all these bands the h k l planes will have to calculate it from the you know distance between this two lines of a particular band. And say for example, if this is 2 theta b 1 and this is uh, 2, uh, 2 theta b 2 and this is 2 theta b 3, then if we have calibrated the distance between the sample and the phosphor screen then this distance in length of these bands could be calibrated and then we can know the two thetas of these bands right. Thereby, once we know the two thetas of this band then by using the formula n lambda is equal to 2 d theta which is true for the electron beam with a very low wavelength. Of course, those are of very low wavelength one can relate this theta or 2 theta b with respect to you know n lambda by 2 d of that particular h k l and therefore, we can find out the value of h k l right. So, if we can find out the value of this band which is h 1 k 1 l 1 and this is 3 bar 1 1 and if this is h 2 k 2 l 2 as 2 2 bar 0 band 3 as 0 to 2 bar then you see we can calculate the zone axis. So, the first thing is that we will calculate we will see how mathematically we can obtain the zone axis right the 3 zone axis that is axis 1 2 2 3 and 3 1. Secondly, if we can know the angle between the two lines of a band 2 theta v, then if the distance of the sample and the phosphor screen is well calibrated, then we can also find out the angle from the pattern center to these zone excesses, right. So, if we can find out what is alpha 1 2, alpha 2 3 and alpha 3 1 from the Kikuchi pattern, we can relate this to find out the value of N d, which is also known as beam normal or the incident beam electron beam direction right. And then 
So, this is the one thing we will find out, this is the second thing we will find out and then we will try to find out R d in terms of Miller indices of the sample by rotating the you know sample in a T m kept in sample which is kept in copper grid. And we will also try to find out R d from a single Kikuchi pattern that is a single hole this whole Kikuchi pattern right. So, let us go ahead you see that while we are finding out this you know information regarding the Joe nexus and the N D and the you know R D of the sample and we know that the Kikuchi pattern is basically on a flat phosphor screen right and this basically should have been on a you know it is a gronomic projection should have been on a sphere right it should have been something like this on a sphere right. So, the difference between the flat phosphor screen and the sphere is basically given by you see the distance n p is equal to O n times of tan of tau. But to tell you that as because the lambda of the electron beam is source less then it is almost equal to O n tau because you see that in case of this kind of diffraction the distance n p is very close to n and therefore, the n p is equal to almost equal to the arc of that sphere. So, n p is basically equal to O n times tau. So, while we are doing this kind of calculations we are taking an assumption that the diffraction pattern is though gnomic projection the distance near the center pattern can be considered to be scattered linearly with the projection angle tau and that is we are considering while calculating the zone axis and the n d and the r d of the of a particular Kikuchi pattern one by one. So, let us consider you know determination of the zone axis right. Now, let us consider that we are trying to determine the zone axis a uh, 1 2 and then zone axis 2 3 and zone axis 3 1. If the band 1 is basically h 1 k 1 l 1 band 2 is h 2 k 2 l 2 and band 3 is h 3 k 3 l 3 where the axis 1 2 is basically u 1 2 v 1 2 w 1 2 axis 2 3 is equal to u 2 3 v 2 3 w 2 3 and axis 3 1 is equal to u 3 1 v 3 1 here it is w and w 3 1. Then axis 1 2 which is equal to you know u 1 2 v 1 2 w 1 2 equal to you know using the right hand thumb rule is h 1 k 1 l 1 cross product with band 2 h 2 k 2 l 2 right axis 2 3 equal to u 2 3 v 2 3 w 2 3 also by using the right hand thumb rule it becomes equal to h 2 k 2 l 2 from band 2 
band 2 cross product with band 3 which is H 3 K 3 L 3 right. Then excess 3 1 equal to U 3 1 V 3 1 W 3 1 again right hand thumb rule and that is band 3 H 3 K 3 L 3 has to be cross product with H 1 K 1 L 1 that is band 1 right. Now, we know that H 1 K 1 L 1 is basically you know 3 bar 1 1 right and cross product with H 2 K 2 L 2 which is 2 2 bar 0 right and if we do this you will find that u 1 2 v 1 2 w 1 2 equal to and let me do it for you for the first quadrant 1 into 0 sorry minus 1 into 2 bar right comma minus you know 3 bar into 0 into 0 minus 1 1 into 2 into 2 and then again 3 bar this one into 2 bar into 2 bar minus you see 1 this one into 2. So, this makes it equal to you see 2 2 bar Oh, sorry again 2 and then 6 bar right. So, oh, sorry 3 into 2 is 6 minus of 2 is 4. So, this makes equal to 2, 2 and 4 right just try to delete this small part to make it proper ok. So, what I was saying that this is basically 2 from here and then 2 from here you see minus of 2 minus and then it is 3 to just 6 minus of 2 is 4. So, the Miller indices has to be normalized to the smallest Miller indices as possible. So, it becomes 1 1 2 right. On the other hand if you take and find out x is 2 3. So, h 2 k 2 l 2 is band 2 which is basically 2 2 bar 0 2 2 bar 0 and if you do a cross product with s 3 k 3 k 3 l 3 it is 0 2 2 bar and if we use the same procedure if you if you make the same procedure and then we can find out then that becomes equal to 2 uh, sorry uh, 2 bar into 2 minus 0 into 2 comma minus of you see 2 into 2 bar minus of 0 comma 2 into 2 minus of 2 bar into 0 which becomes equal to basically 4 4 and 4 and then it has to be normalized to the smallest Miller indices possible. So, x is 2 3 becomes 1 1 1. So, what do you find out that x is 1 2 is basically 1 1 2 x is 2 3 is basically 1 1 1. 
Now, let us find out x is 3 1. x is 3 1 is the cross product between band 3 and band 1 that is the cross product between 0 to 2 bar you know cross product with 3 bar 1 1 which is basically equal to you see 2 into 1 minus 2 bar into 1 right 2 into 1 minus 2 bar into 1 and then minus sorry 0 into 1 minus 2 bar into 3 bar comma 0 into 1 minus 2 into 3 bar. This becomes equal to you see 4, 6 and again 6 and normalized to the lowest Miller indices it becomes equal to 2, 3, 3. So, x is 3, 1, 1 is basically 2, 3, 3 right. So, in this way we can find out we can determine the zone axis of a from a you know Kikuchi pattern and you see that in order to find out N D and the uh, zone axis and the N D and the R D from a Kikuchi pattern we basically need only you see 3 bands. So, band 1, band 2 and 3 and we can obtain this, this and this. Now, x is 1 2 has an angular relationship with N d that is alpha 1 2 which is 11.6 degrees, x is 2 3 which is 1 1 1 has an angular relationship alpha 2 3 with respect to N d which is 8.5 degrees, x is 3 1 which is you know 2 3 3 has an angular relationship of alpha 3 1 which is 7.2 with respect to N d. Now, the you see the dot product between the two axes is, is basically equal to the cos of this angles alpha 1 2 alpha 2 3 and alpha 3 1 right. So, so just I will write it for you that if the angles between the incident electron beam B n and the zone axis is known and are alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3. Then if say B n is equal to in Miller indices say it is q r s then the you know then cos of alpha 1 2 is equal to the x is 1 2 which is u 1 2 v 1 2 w 1 2 dot product with q r s. Now, this is basically divided by u 1 2 whole square plus v 1 2 whole square w 1 2 whole square to normalize the total equal to 1 right. Now, cos of alpha 2 3 now is equal to then u 2 3 v 2 3 w 2 3 divided by root over u 2 3 whole square v 2 3 whole square w 2 3 whole square times q r s means dot product of q r s cos of alpha 3 1 is equal to u 3 1 v 3 1 w 3 1 by root over u 3 1 whole square v 3 1 whole square w 3 1 whole square dot of 
q r and s. So, now let us calculate one by one this cos alpha q uh, q r s for cos alpha 1 2. So, cos alpha 1 2 that is you see is cos of 11.6 degrees and if we calculate I have priori calculated it and this comes out uh, uh, okay, uh, let me calculate it. So, if cos of 11.6 degrees is equal to then you see u 1 v 1 2 w 1 2 which is 1 1 2 and then it is root over 1 square plus 1 square plus 2 square. So, 1 plus 1 plus 4 which is equal to 6. So, I am doing a little step jump to save the space here and so and it is multiplied. So, so it is a dot product with q r s. So, you see we can write this as q plus r plus 2 s is equal to root 6 times cos of 11.6 degrees and which I have priori calculated and it is equal to 2.399. So, you can use the calculator and see whether it is correct or not. Now, in this case alpha 2 3 which is equal to cos of 8.5 degrees equal to so, alpha 2 3 the excess uh, u 2 3 v 2 3 w 2 3 is 1 1 1. So, it is 1 1 1 divided by how much it is u square 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square that is divided by root of 3 times dot product q r s. So, you see here this is q plus r plus s equal to root 3 times cos of 8.5 degrees which I have calculated to be equal to 1.713. Right. Now, for cos alpha 3 1 alpha 3 1 is basically 2 3 3. So, you see cos of alpha 3 1 which is 7.2 degrees equal to 2 3 3 divided by root of 2 square plus 3 square plus 3 square that is 4 plus 9 plus 9 and that is basically equal to root of 22 times q r s becomes equal to. So, 2 q plus 3 r plus 3 s is equal to root of 22 times cos of 7.2 degrees, which I have already done a prior calculation and which is coming out to be equal to 4.659, 4.659. So, you see that basically we have obtained three equations. This is equation number 1 this is equation number 2 and this is equation number you see 3 and from these three equations we can we have to find out three variables which are q r and s and now it is much easier to find from these three equations right. So, in this way we have obtained three equations with three variables from which we need to find out these three variables. These are q r and s which are Miller indices for the n d right. So, if we write the first equation what we obtained is q plus r plus 2 s equal to 0.2399. This is equation number 1 obtained with zone axis 1 2. The second equation is q plus r 
plus s equal to 1.713 obtained with the zone axis 2 3 and the third equation is 2 q plus 3 s 3 r plus 3 s equal to 4.659 which is obtained between a and d and the zone axis 3 1 which is which is 2 3 3 right. So, now if we do the subtraction between you know equation 1 with equation 2 you see equation 1 is q plus r plus 2 s and equation 2 is q plus r plus s. So, if you subtract q plus r plus 2 s minus q minus r minus s then it remains only s which is equal to 2.399 from equation 1 minus a 1.713 which comes out to be equal to 0 0.686 right. Now, if you do a second subtraction let us do a seven sub, uh, second subtraction between equation you see if we take the equation number 2 and multiply first with 3 right and then if we subtract the equation number 2 with the equation number 3 then what will happen you can see that 3 q plus 3 r plus 3 s is subtracted that is minus of 2 q minus 3 r minus 3 s which gives you the value of q which is equal to you know 3 times 1.713 minus of 4.659 right. So, this becomes equal to you see 0 0.4 8. Now, we do another subtraction, but now you see if we do a subtraction for equation you know we take equation 3 and subtract this with equation 2 and then we subtract this with equation 1, then what will happen you see 2 q plus 3 r plus 3 s of equation 3 is subtracted from 2 q's of equation 1 and 2, 2 q uh, 2 r's of equation 1 and 2 and 3 s from equation 1 and 2. Therefore, we get the value of r which remains here and this becomes equal to 4.659 minus equation number 2 that is 1.713 minus 2.399 and this basically is equal to 0 0.546. So, the value of q r s which is the Miller indices of n d that is the incident electron beam B n becomes equal to you see 0 0.48, 0 0.547 that is r and s is 0 0.686. Now, you see if we make it closer to the you know uh, if you remove try to remove its decimal and try to make it closer then you see you can write it it's 0 0.5 and 0 0.6 and 0 0.7. So, the Miller indices of the QRS is basically close to 5. 6 and 7 and that is how we can find out the you see the n d of the sample. Now, you remember that while we have found the n d which is equivalent to the beam normal of the sample, the sample is kept in such a way that the r d and the t d is basically known and let us see how we can obtain the value of R d in this sample right. So, in order to find out R d of the sample in order to find out determine this R d when the uh, you know q r s of a certain q q g pattern is known. So, 
you see that in case of TEM, if the if the sample is kept in such a way that the RD and the TD is known as I was saying in the last slide. So, let us let me write it down that if uh, uh, the, the, the TEM sample basically is, is kept in, uh, in such a way that uh, with I mean it is in reference it is in reference direction R D or T D parallel to the you know the edge of the you know specimen holder. We know that in case of T E M the specimen holder you know the specimen holder is something like a you know copper grade right copper grade right it looks something like this let me let me try to uh, draw it something something like this it has something grids on it so something like a copper grid and this holder can be uh, you know utilized can be used for many you know image rotation so you know one can rotate the image if we know say for example if say we have kept the sample in such a way this is rd and say for example this is td one can rotate the image rotate the you know copper grid along rd about rd right something like that now if if you say that if this is rd and then this is td of the sample inside the screen and this is nd and if we get the opportunity to you know rotate you see rd say we are rotating rd like this and then the nd after the rotation basically changes right so the kikuchi pattern basically changes right so if we can holder can be used for rotation along a, a certain you know uh, sample uh, reference direction direction uh, we we will get a you know a new kikuchi pattern right a new kikuchi pattern which will have a with a which will have a different nd that means a different q r s let us say it is q1 r1 s1 this time right so if we can rotate the specimen along a certain rd then we can get a new kikuchi pattern and this kikuchi pattern will have a you see a different nd right q1 r1 s1 and then we can for the new kikuchi pattern we can find out this q1 r1 s1 like how we have determined in the last few slides so once we can determine this q1 r1 s1 we can do a cross multiplication of the previous q r s with the you know cross product with the q1 r1 s1 will give the you know the miller indices say it is you know l m n that is the you know miller indices for r d because while we rotate the specimen the n d is changing and the t d is changing as the rotation is carried out along r d the r d is not changing. So, one n d which is q r s and another n d which is you know q 1 r 1 s 1 and the cross product between one with the another will give you this direction which is r d in terms of its Miller indices. So, tilting the sample along about R D, we can find out a new N D which is this and then 
cross product of old N D with new N D that is cross product sorry product of H of the Miller indices of new and the old N D will give R D. But you see that while determining R D we cannot do it for F means it is not practical to determine R D like this right for every electron incident beam position and then go to the next point for rastering and do the same tilting it is a very tedious process to do it. So, one has to find out R D without rotating the sample and using a single Kikuchi pattern right. So, let us try to understand how we can determine R D from a single Kikuchi pattern and let us take the same example and let me let me draw the Kikuchi pattern this time for you and say this is the Kikuchi pattern and as I said that this is the R D and this is the T D and somewhere there is you know of course, N D is something like this. Now, if you see that if the Kikuchi pattern is say for example, something like this say it is one of the Kikuchi pattern that is from that uh, figure that I was showing. Now, if we know that perpendicular to the Kikuchi pattern if there is a you know vector or a direction perpendicular to the Kikuchi pattern let us say this is x and if we can find out the you know h k l of this the Miller indices of this direction you see sorry this direction. Let, let us say that in this example if we have a direction x like this and then the direction which is parallel to this Kikuchi band let us say it is y and let us say that it is u v and w right this direction is u v w z of this x y and z axis is equal to n d and let us say that n d as usual is q r s right and this is z which is parallel to n d right. Now, you see this is this can be considered as a pre pattern reference system right. So, this can be considered as pattern reference system and this pattern reference system can be you know calculated means a rotation matrix can be calculated between the you see the pattern reference system and the you know crystal reference system because the Miller indices of this x y and z are known. And so, this this method that we are trying to tell is because of the development by research and development by various groups one is Young et al who started their work in 1973 and published them in 1973 and, and another is Heilman et al. 1982. So, you see that both of them in their group they separately try to find out R D from a Kikuchi pattern and they come up with a solution which is similar like this and you see that as x equal to you see h k l and you see y equal to u v w and z equal to n d of course, that is q r s then the rotation matrix you see then the rotation matrix matrix that is you know r c p the rotation matrix from you know crystal frame of reference lens to the you know pattern frame of reference you know Kikuchi pattern frame of reference reference and this pattern frame of reference is basically an intermediate frame of reference right. 
So, the rotation matrix from the crystal frame of reference to the Pratton frame of reference is given by this R C P and can be given by a matrix something like this, which is basically x uh, let me write x, y and z and which is equal to x is h k l, y is u v w and z is q r and s. So, the pattern frame of reference P, let me write it down, the pattern frame of reference that is P contains the information of the indexed beam normal that is B n or N d and differs from the sample reference system by some uh, rotation angle and say that that rotation angle say this is the direction of R d and say this rotation angle is gamma right and this rotation angle is along the beam normal right in the So, you see that we can have a rotation matrix from the crystal frame of reference to the pattern frame of reference like this right. Now, if we try to determine the rotation matrix between the pattern frame of reference and sample frame of reference, it will be quite easy, but let me again take the time to you know draw the same thing here and let me say okay, this is the uh, the Kikuchi band and this is the center line and this is the x axis that we were drawing right and say this is the y then and so let us say that this is R d and this is T d right and let us say this is as N d which is equal to z and same for the for both the cases right. So, if we look into this if this pattern reference system is denoted by you know say say uh, 1 dash 2 dash 3 dash that is x x is 1 dash and y is uh, 2 dash and z is 3 dash. On the other hand, if if the the sample uh, reference system is denoted by 1, 2, 3 for you know R d, T d and N d respectively. Then, then the then you see then the then the rotation matrix, then the rotation matrix from the pattern reference system system 
to the sample reference system. is you know can be given by r you know p s and which is equal to you see and let me give a brief uh, work here. So, as z and n d is same. So, z dot product with n d will be here of course, it will be here and if as because the rotation is basically along the z and by an angle which is gamma, then that is the dot product between see initially it will be the relationship between the pattern and the sample. So, the dot product is between x that is the x for the pattern dot product with R d the second will be x for the pattern with respect to the T d and then x for the pattern with respect to N d right. The third will be y with respect to R d then y with respect to T d then y with respect to N d and then z with respect to R d z with respect to T d and like I said z with respect to N d. This from the if we take the above 1 bar 2 bar 3 bar and 1 2 3 reference system, we can write it something like that 1 bar 1, 1 bar 2, 1 bar 3, 2 bar 1, 2 bar 2, 2 bar 3, 3 bar 1, 3 bar 2, 3 bar 3. That is all of them are basically dot products, right. And therefore, we can write. So, dot products between you know x and r d is basically equal to you see cos of gamma obviously and dot product between x and uh, T d will be equal to you see cos of 90 minus gamma sorry 90 minus gamma and dot product between you see x and N d is cos of 90 which is basically 0 degrees right. Dot product between you see y this is y and R d is equal to cos of 90 plus gamma dot product between y and T d is basically again cos of gamma because you see if this is gamma then the angular relationship between y and T d is again gamma. The relationship between y and N d is cos of 90 degrees, the relationship between z and R d is cos of 90 degrees, the relationship between z and T d is again 90 degrees. So, cos of 90 degrees and relationship between z and N d that is cos of 0 degree is this one. So, the rotation matrix pertaining to you know the pattern reference system with respect to the sample reference systems comes out to be equal to cos of gamma sin of gamma 0 minus of sin of gamma cos of gamma 0 0 0 1 and obviously, this will be like this because you see the rotation uh, is along N d which is equal to z therefore, it will be 1 and this is the rotation matrix. Now, if we if we look further into this and uh, sorry and if we try to determine further. Now, the new rotation matrix that we need to obtain is between the you know crystal reference frame and the sample reference frame right. So, now if we say rotation matrix from the you know crystal reference frame to the you know important sample 
reference frame. Sorry for the handwriting. That will be RCP, right? Uh, sorry, RCS, right? And this will be equal to RCP times RPS. Uh, R, uh, RPS, right? Now, RCP as we calculated is H K L Q V W Q R S, right? And RPS that is pattern to sample is cos of gamma sin of gamma, right? Minus of sin of gamma cos of gamma 0 0 1 0 0 like this right. Now, if we if we say that we we know that what is H k L because H k L is perpendicular to a Kikuchi pattern which is you know 0 2 2 bar. So, the H k L that is x which is normal to that uh, the Kikuchi band. So, we know that this H k L is equal to you see 0 2 bar 2 from the Kikuchi pattern. Now, if say for this example the uh, angle gamma is equal to 41.5 degrees. Okay. And I am I'm not changing anything here and, and I am referring it to the book and I am I am using the same angle. So, that one can go and read the book and it becomes easier for them right. So, if y is basically uh, parallel to that Kikuchi band you know that indexed uh, indexed Kikuchi band and we already know the value of you see N D. Right. So, we know the value of N D is equal to you see Q R S equal to 5, 6 and 7 right and we calculated that. Let me change it into direction symbol. So, what could be the Miller indices of y? So, by doing a cross product of you know uh, using a right hand thumb rule between the x and N D one can obtain the value of you know the Miller indices of y. So, u v w which is the Miller indices of y is equal to the cross product between n d that is 5, 6, 7 cross product into what is this h k l 0 2 bar 2. Now, if we calculate this it comes out to be 6 into uh, 2 minus 7 into 2 bar for the first one then minus of you see 5 into 2 minus 7 into 0 comma 5 into 2 bar minus 6 into 0 right. So, this comes out to be equal to be 26 10 bar 10 bar right. So, you see that we have calculated the value of H k L from the value of Miller indices of y which is u v w and the Miller indices of n d which we have calculated earlier. So, once we found out the value of you know uh, the value of Miller indices of y and the value of Miller indices from the value of Miller indices of x and z which were already there then we can get the rotation matrix between the crystal and the sample coordinate system which I have written in the previous slide as H k L u v w q r s times you know cos of you see 41.5 degrees sin of 41.5 degrees 0 minus of sin of 41.5 degrees cos of 41.5 degrees 0 and then 0 0 1. Now, if we write the values of h k l u v w normalize it to its uh, you know 
h square plus k square plus l square in case of h k l u square plus v square plus w square in case of u v w and q square plus r square plus s square in case of q r s. Then you see what we will get, we will get in case of h k l it is 0 you know uh, 2 bar and 2 and it will be divided by you see root of 8 say right because 2 square plus 2 square is equal to 4 plus 4 and root over 8. So, root over 8 and here also root over 8. In case of u v and w it is 26 10 bar and 10 bar and if we calculate uh, uh, the uh, it will be square root of 26 square plus 10 square plus 10 square and if you calculate you will find out that it is coming out to be root of 800 and 76. So, we will divide it by root of 876 in each case right and then q r s is equal to 5, 6 and 7 and so root over 5 square plus 6 square plus 7 square and it comes out to be 110. So, we will divide it by 110 right and then it is a dot product with respect to you see cos of 41.5 is 75, 0.75 sin of 41.5 is 0.66, rest is 0, minus 0 0.66, 0 0.75, 0, 0, 0, 1. Now, if we do a dot product of it, what we will find out that this becomes equal to you see 0, 0 0.706 is it will be minus because it has a root 2 and then 0 0.706 here and then it is 26 divided by root of 876 it comes out to be 0 0.878 and then 10 divided by root of 876 comes out to be minus of 0 0.338 minus of 0 0.338 here also and then 5 divided by root of 1110 comes out to be 0 0.476 it also comes here 0 0.6 divided by root of 110 comes out to be root of 571 and then root of 0 0.667 right and dot product with you see this one. So, if we do it and we can find out this equal to you see uh, it is a big one. So, 0 0.876 into minus of 0 0.66 plus of minus of 0 0.706 into 0 0.75 you know plus uh, 0 0.338 so, minus of this into minus of 0 0.66 and for the third case it will be minus of 0 0.706 again into 0 0.75 plus of minus 0 0.338 into 0 0.66 it is also minus right and for the second quadrant it will be 0 0.876 into 0 0.75 and then it will be for the second one minus of 0 0.706 into 0 0.66 plus minus 0 0.338 into 0 0.75. So, this is 1 and then the third one is 0 0.706 into 0 0.66 plus minus 0 0.338 into 0 0.75. For the third quadrant it will be it will be little easier because 0 0.476 into 1, 0 0.571 into 1 and then 0 0.667 into 1. So, you see that we can get the rotation matrix between the you see the crystal coordinate system and the sample coordinate system. So, 
but in this way we have obtained a 3 cross 3 matrix containing 9 variables. So, you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and if we uh, calculate this and solve it we, we will find out that these variables are basically coming out to be you see, 0 0.579. 0 0.659 and 0 0.476 and then 0 0.307, 0 0.719 minus 0 0.571 minus and then plus 0 0.753, 0 0.212 and 0 0.667. So, basically this is the rotation matrix between the crystal coordinate system and the sample coordinate system and therefore, we can say that these are the you know R d, T d and N d of the sample and you can see that this is 5, 6 and 7 for the Q R S of N D right. So, in this way we have obtained you can find we have found out the value of R D in terms of you know H K L which is basically equal to minus of 0 0.579 minus of 0 0.307 and then 0 0.753. Now, let us find out this Miller indices in terms of closest you know integers and uh, for that it is very easy to do it you let us divide this whole thing by you know uh, you see uh, 0 0.307 for example. So, you see 0 0.307 and then 0 0.307. So, what happens that it will come out to be minus of 18.9 minus of 1 and minus of you see 8 1.89 and this is plus of 2.45. So, if we uh, find out a closer solution then it becomes equal to 2 uh, sorry uh, let us say we multiply it by 10 then it becomes equal to 18.9 which is basically near to 20 and then it is minus of 10 because we are multiplying by 10 and then it becomes equal to 25. So, if we divide this by 5 then it becomes 4 2 5. So, something like this will be the value of R d and that is why we find out the value of R d without rotating the Kikuchi pattern from a single Kikuchi pattern. right? So, in this lecture we learned to determine the Miller indices of the zone axis of the Kikuchi bands. We, we determined that Miller indices for the N d from the you know uh, angular relationship between the zone axis and the N d which is basically a dot product. We determined the Miller indices of R d by you know tilting the uh, sample uh, in the sample using the sample holder in the TEM and finally, we use the Young's and the Hellman's approach to determine the you know value of R d T d and N d without rotating the Kikuchi or uh, by using a single Kikuchi pattern. Thank you very much for this class.